molto pericoloso eh, questo passaggio della diossina dalla donna al bambino, al feto, perché gli si, gli si trasmettono 25-30 anni di diossina, quindi è una dose massiccia per un corpo così piccolo e che soprattutto poi è soggetto a tutta una dinamica ormonale. Ok, uh, dioxins interfere with male and female sex hormones, so they interfere with the fetal sexual development and dioxins interfere with thyroid levels which means they interfere with the baby's mental development a whole book has been written about this I think it's translated into Italy in Italian by Theo Coburn now Industry says about these things. They say, oh, no one's died from dioxin. That's very simplistic. And inaccurate. In fact, because dioxin increases cancer, people have died from dioxin. But it misses the point. It, when a pollutant literally kills people, you see it's happening. You know, what are all these dead bodies doing here? You, you, if a substance we put into the environment killed people outright, we would see it was a problem because of all the dead bodies. Se le sostanze ammazzassero la gente immediatamente, uno direbbe, ecco ci fanno tutti questi cadaveri qua in mezzo. Il problema è che non lo fai in maniera così immediata. The real problematic toxics are the ones which have a subtle effect, which you don't see. And I'd like to illustrate this with IQ, intelligence. This is what we call normally distributed. It's called the bell-shaped curve. Una curva and basically what this says is the average person, most people have an average IQ. Che la parte delle hanno un and a medio. few people have a very low IQ. E molto poche hanno un molto basso. And a few people have a very high IQ. E molte e molte poche hanno molto alto. Now I want to, I'm going to shift the IQ of this population over by five IQ points. Spostando di cinque punti il quoziente intellettivo. I shifted the whole curve. Si sposta tutta la curva. Now a parent is not going to notice the difference between a brother or sister siblings which are different by just five IQ points. Someone with one kid. Tra due fratelli che hanno cinque anni di differenza non si noterà molto. And school teachers are not going to notice this difference. E gli insegnanti non se ne accorgeranno. And walking down the street, you're not going to notice this difference. E per strada non ve ne accorgerete. But look what happens to these two tails. This tail here, above an IQ of 130, we have very bright geniuses. Geniuses up here. Ma le due punte della campana, da una parte ci sono i geni. And below 70, we have mentally handicapped. E ci sono i ritardati mentali. Now watch what happens when I shift that whole curve over. You halve the number of geniuses in your society and you double the number of mentally handicapped. That has a huge impact on society. The economics of that. You're not getting the the pioneers, the great thinkers leading your society, and you're having to spend a fortune on, on the doubled number of mentally handicapped people. We think we did this in the United States when we had lead in gasoline. And we may be doing it today by putting fluoride fluoro in our drinking water. E adesso probabilmente lo stiamo facendo aggiungendo il fluoro nell'acqua potabile. Anyway, I'm going to leave the dangers of this 20th century technology 
and move on to the 21st century with this statement. Even if you made incineration safe, you would never make it sensible. It simply does not make sense to spend so much money destroying resources that we should be sharing with the future. It just doesn't make sense. So why argue about whether something is safe or not when it is utterly stupid in the 21st century? Perché nel XXI secolo continuiamo a chiederci se è una cosa sicura, se è comunque una cosa stupida. The problem of waste is not a technological problem. There are no magic machines. It's a problem of organization, education, and industrial design. And that's what we should be focusing on. And that's what zero waste focuses on. The sustainable solution. Zero waste 2020. 2020 because we don't expect to get to zero waste tomorrow. Yeah, we've got to have some time. Quindi la strategia di Fiuti Zero dice 2020 perché noi ci aspettiamo di raggiungere i Fiuti Zero non domani ma entro il 2020. Uh, zero waste says no to incineration and no to discardica. Um, there are three things that we need for zero waste. We need industrial responsibility a monte. We need community responsibility a valley. And we need good political leadership to bring these two together. And in my talk, I'm going to show you exactly where we can bring these two together. First of all, let's talk about industrial responsibility. We need, from the very beginning, our industrial designers have to design things for sustainability. We must stop using toxics like cadmium and mercury and lead. And we need extended producer responsibility. Now, the way it works today, I am a manufacturer and I sell you, sir, this product. Oggi funziona che io sono un produttore e ti vendo questo prodotto. Thank you very much. Grazie. Okay. Ciao. Now, you, sir, you use that product. Um, what do you do with it when you don't want it anymore? You throw it away. Yeah. But it's, it's your problem, right? It's your problem. It's your problem. Now, extended producer responsibility says, when you finish with that, sir, you give it back to me. You give it back to me. This car, this television set, this computer goes back to the manufacturer. That's what we mean by extended producer responsibility. One of the first things that will happen if industry has to look after these products is they'll use less toxics. E la prima cosa che farà la produzione industriale sarà di usare cose meno tossiche. And another thing that will happen is they'll make them easier to dismantle. E le faranno più semplici da smantellare. And the price. <laughs> and well, good. Good. We might have to pay more money for sustainability. We, we might have to pay more money so our kids have a future. We might have to pay more money to have a bloody planet left at the end of this century. Our society has been wrecked by short-term greed, which wants to make as much money as fast as possible. And we are paying the price. La nostra società sta naufragando per via di questi progetti a breve termine. In our health and in the lack of future of our children, we are paying a much higher price. E noi stiamo pagando un prezzo altissimo anche in termini di salute e di quello che stiamo per lasciare ai nostri figli. Now, in, in, uh, here's a good example of extended producer responsibility with packaging, embalaging. Uh, the beer industry in Ontario has been using refillable glass bottles, refillable, for 50 years. They're recovering 98% of those bottles. Each bottle goes around 18 times. It's saving the company money. This is interesting. 
And there's 2,000 jobs in Ontario collecting these bottles and washing these bottles. And it's no cost to the municipality at all. Quindi c'è guadagnato la fabbrica, i posti di lavoro e il comune che non deve smaltire rifiuti. And this, this is a zero waste company. The only other stuff they make is beer which you drink. There's no waste, you just pay it out. Qui è assolutamente rifiuti zero. Okay. And it's been going on for 50 years. And it's probably happening in places in Italy, but not universal. Now, a product much more complicated. This machine has over a thousand parts. It's a copy machine. And the Xerox Corporation is collecting old copy machines from 16 different countries, bringing them to huge warehouses in the Netherlands. And these machines are stripped down and they are recovering 95% of the materials, either as reusable parts or recyclable materials. 95%. And again, this is again interesting with respect to your thing. How much is this costing this huge, complicated problem? Is, is Xerox doing this because they're great environmentalists? No, they're doing this because it's saving them $76 million a year. So the product should be cheaper. Because waste, waste is the visible face of inefficiency. When we make less waste, we're more efficient, we save money. We save money on production costs, we save money on disposal costs. Do you want to translate? We save money on production costs. Risparmiamo soldi sui costi di produzione e risparmiamo i soldi sui costi di smaltimento. By the way, this is the most difficult job in the world. <laughs> no, seriously. If this was a professional, a professional, you'd have two of these people. One would do it for 20 minutes and then you switch to another person and backwards and forwards. Because listen, I, I talk and then I relax as so she does all the work. I talk, I relax, I talk, I relax. She concentrates, what the hell is he saying? And then she translates. So it's work, 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 work. Concentrate, translate, concentrate, translate, concentrate. So you're doing great. Okay. <laughs> Community responsibility begins with source separation. These are the magic machines. These things. These magic machines convert waste into resources. And once we've separated, then we have porta a porta collection systems, not Vespa. Porta a porta collection system. And Porta a Porta is the springboard, the trampolino to zero waste. This is the beginning. Porta a Porta is the beginning of zero waste. In, in San Francisco, they have this Porta a Porta collection system. One container for the recyclables, one for the compostables, one for the residual fraction. Uno è per i riciclabili, uno è per l'organico e uno è per la frazione residua. The fantastic three, they say. The fantastic three. Once a week they pick these things up. E li prendono una volta a settimana. Now the first container is the organic material and that goes to a composting facility. This is a composting facility in Italy. You see it's very low tech, but you'll notice they're using more or less the same technology in San Francisco. And this place is surrounded by agriculture, by farmers who are using the compost to produce fruit and vegetables and wine which goes back to San Francisco. And then 
the recyclables go to a recycling facility. Here's the recycling facility in San Francisco. See there's San Francisco. San Francisco. Now, why can't Naples do that? Why can't Naples export its organic material to the farmers, the peach orchards, instead of sending mountains of eco barley to peach orchards, they could be sending the organics to the peach farmers, grow peaches and sell them in Naples. Perché a Napoli non mandano il compost nei, nei frutteti e, e, e si prendono le pesche invece di mandare in giro le ecoballe? And the, the Naples crisis, if you leave the organics in plastic bags, what happens? Lasciando l'organico nelle buste di plastica puzza. And if people don't pick up the plastic bags in Naples, you have the whole of Naples stinky. E quindi questo ovviamente l'odore invade tutta la città. Thank you. Now, if you pull the organics out, they won't stick. It won't stick. You're left with paper, cardboard, glass, metals, plastic. And what's more, if you build a facility like this in Naples, you're creating jobs. And you have high unemployment in Naples. They need those jobs. This is too simple. So here's the contract. Here's the contract between the cities and the rural areas. The cities get the organics clean, get them to the rural areas, and the rural areas gather all the recyclables and get them to the city with the big plants. Now we get to the frazioni residua. And I'm a professor, and you're my students for tonight, okay? Okay, that's the deal, that's the deal, okay. Studenti? Yeah. Numero uno, numero lezioni? How do you say it? Lesson one. Lesson one. I want you to remember this. Frazione residua equals cattiva Project Azioni Industrial. Okay. In English, the residual fraction equals bad industrial design. In Italian, residual fraction equals. Oh, the two organizers here. They're, they're doing very. You, you, you keep going. Okay. Residual fraction residual equals. There are a few at the back who are just... We'll take names. Okay. Remember, would you remember that? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask you that later. Okay, there's, there's three ways we can start by minimizing that residual fraction. Waste reduction initiatives, um, reuse, repair, and deconstruction, and economic incentives, and I'll illustrate each one. Waste reduction initiatives. In Ireland, the government has put a 15 cent tax on plastic shopping bags. Nobody was very optimistic, but in one year, they reduced the use of plastic shopping bags by 92%. In Italy, you have supermarkets which allow you to refill some Shampoo, detergents, water, milk, and wine. When you go next time to your supermarket, ask them to have these systems. Uh, the message is a very simple one. A little creativity, a monte, saves millions uh, of our Italian creativity. Yes. Vino Ross. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! The best, the best packaging was invented by an Italian. What is it? The best, the, the very best packaging ever. What? No. The best, the best packaging. What? Paper? No. 
Okay. The ice cream cone. You eat it. You eat it. Incredible. Italian creativity. Oh, all right. Um, reuse, repair, and deconstruction. This means you gather the old furniture, the old appliances, and in stores, you repair them, you clean them, you paint them, and you sell them back to the public, including materials from deconstructing buildings. Incluse le cose che vengono dalle case che sono state demolite. Lesson two. Do it. Lesson two. Recyclables are high volume and low value. Le cose riciclabili hanno un grosso volume e un valore minuscolo. Reusables are low volume, high value. Le cose riusate hanno una dimensione piccola e un valore alto. Low volume, high value. Let's go back to Los Angeles. Torniamo a Los Angeles. Reusable objects. 2%, just 2% of the total, but look at their value. Solo il 2% delle cose riusate, ma guardate il valore. These are worth more, almost as much as all the paper and all the plastics put together. 39 million out of 103 million. 39 million di dollari, quasi il risultato delle due cose più costose messe insieme. But here you run into a cultural problem because I understand that Italians do not like to buy second-hand goods. They want new stuff, new, 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 new. E qui però incontriamo un problema culturale perché gli, gli italiani pare che non gli piaccia comprare cose di seconda mano. Which is a shame because this man is making three million dollars, three million dollars a year selling this material and thirty well-paid jobs. Involved in this operation, so we're talking about jobs and money. Questo signore guadagna 3 milioni di dollari e impiega 32 persone. And I have videotapes which you can get at this website, which illustrate this operation. E ci sono dei video su questo sito che illustrano questa operazione. I would say that this is one of the missing missing links in Italy right now. Reuse, repair. Okay, economic incentives. After you've maximized composting, recycling, waste reduction, reuse, deconstruction, then you charge for the residual fraction. You charge for it. Ah, dopo aver massimizzato l'uso di tutte queste cose riciclabili, bisogna eh, dare un costo alla the, frazione residua. The more you make, the more you pay. Più frazione residua fai, più ne paghi. You want to be a slob? You're going to pay money for it. Oh, this is the sad story. This is really sad. <laughs> side, side. Only the rich, only the rich will be able to eat off plastic. We poor are going to have to use, oh, this is terrible, porcelain. China. Stainless steel. Ah. This is terrible. Oh. How are we going to live without plastic cups and plastic knives and plastic forks and styrofoam? <laughs> this would be terrible. <sighs> okay. So this residual fraction is the key difference between incineration and zero waste. Incineration makes the residuals disappear as nanopod. Okay? And ash. Whereas the zero waste strategy wants to make the residual fraction very, very visible. Okay. Why do we want to make the residual fraction very visible? Perché vogliamo rendere visibile la frazione residua? Studenti? <laughs> Studenti? <laughs> Because the fraction of the residual is the fraction of the residual. Because it, yes, well done, top of the The residual fraction equals bad industrial design. 
a cattiva progettazione industriale. You, if it's bad, you want to change it. You want to make it visible. You want to make your mistakes visible. Well done. <laughs> Top of the class. Se si vede bene questa frazione residua che è uno sbaglio, lo si può correggere. And of course, bad purchasing decisions as well. So it's not just industry. Okay. Now, the first thing we've got to do is to separate those residuals, not at home, but in facilities. Now, in Nova Scotia, they built the residual se separation facilities for that residual fraction. And these are built immediately in front of the landfill, and no residual can go directly into the landfill. It must, they must go through this building. And in this building, the residuals go onto long conveyor belts or opened up. Ah, ci sono queste lunghe fasce di nastri trasportatori. And paid workers pull out more recyclables and more stuff. Ci sono gli operai che smantellano tutti i rifiuti e li differenziano. And the dirty organic fraction is not touched. Panolini. Le cose organiche non vengono toccate. And so the organic, dirty organic fraction gets all the way to the end and then it is automatically shredded and goes through a composting operation not to produce a product to sell but to stabilize it biologically <coughs> above ground before it causes the problems underground. Now, I, this, is good. this is working, okay? This is working, but I want to improve it and the way to improve it is to incorporate in here a research center. Quindi per migliorare ancora di più questa struttura ci yeah. dovrebbe essere un centro di ricerca. And we would use professors and students from the local universities, from Rome and Naples and wherever. Che sfrutti le conoscenze delle università, dei professori e degli studenti. Or a technical college. And these professors and these students would study these residuals. In cui questi residui verrebbero studiati. And there's many things that they could do, but the most important is that they would recommend to industry better industrial design. E quindi tutti questi studiosi potrebbero raccomandare alle industrie come pianificare, come programmare meglio la produzione industriale. And this is where this facility is where community responsibility meets up with industrial responsibility. You're looking at industry's bad industrial design. And the message to industry, really important. The message to industry, if we can't reuse it, if we can't recycle it, if we can't compost it, then industry shouldn't be making it. That's the message for the 21st century. It's a moral imperative. Yeah, unlike that. Um, and these... Research facilities are the laboratory for sustainability. So imagine that you've got in landfills around the region or around the country, we have these research centers studying. And at some point in Italy, we need to have a regional or at least a national institute for zero waste and sustainability. Now look what we've done. Look what we've done. We've started with these. And we've ended with this.